Hey there, welcome to the Girl Go Global podcast, where faith and works are empowered. With every episode, we're embracing our multi-layered lives with faith, know-how, and grit. I'm your host, Dr. Jasmine, and I'm ready to go global with you. Let's get started. Welcome to the Girl Go Global podcast, where faith and works are empowered. I'm Dr. Jasmine, your host, and I have with me a special guest, Miss Raquel Shelton Robeson. She's an author, speaker, certified coach, and CEO of the B Inspired You LLC, a personal and professional development lifestyle brand. She helps individuals seeking to break free of self-imposed restrictions while cultivating strategies to live a more significant life. She is a HBCU grad. She has a master's in communication and training. And y'all, she has been featured in HuffPost and Forbes. Her latest book, Dreams Bigger Than Texas, a story of faith, purpose, perseverance, and growth in womanhood. I'm so excited to have Miss Raquel here with me today. So excited that she's also decided to sponsor this episode through her company, Be The Inspired You LLC. Raquel, would you tell the people more about yourself right now? Jasmine, thank you for having me. What an intro. Oh my goodness. Uh, I am so excited to be a part of this platform. Thank you for inviting me. I'm proud of you and all the great works that you're doing over there with your brand. Uh, as Jasmine mentioned, I am Raquel Shelton Robertson. I'm a certified professional life coach, an author, a speaker, but most importantly, a servant leader and passionate about serving and inspiring others. Be the Inspired You um, is my baby. It's my passion project. And my desire with that is to pour into the lives of others and to help individuals uh, live out their purpose and their God-given talents. That's so awesome. I'm so glad to have this conversation with you. I'm so glad we got to connect a few weeks ago in yes. Atlanta at Rolling Out. And here we are now on this podcast. Here we are. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. So I just want to get right into this girl chat. Today, we're talking about purpose. We're talking a little bit about relationships. And we're going to get into Rochelle. Raquel's latest book. So Raquel, what you tell me, tell me, tell me, you got so many things going on. <laughs> Let's start by talking about what has driven you and where your faith lies with all that you have going on. Your latest book is all about your big dreams. Tell us more about how your faith impacts your big dreams. I love that. Uh, so Dreams Bigger Than Sex is a story of faith, purpose, perseverance, and growth into womanhood. It is my baby, my memoir, a short backstory. I was a senior at Texas Southern University, and statistically, I shouldn't have been preparing to graduate college, first-generation college graduate. Um, I was born to a 19-year-old crack and cocaine addict um, on the rough side of south side of Chicago um, in a domestically violent home, substance abuse, um, and things of that sort. So here I am preparing to graduate and I'm like, yo, there are women out there that could hear this story and to know that their past does not have to dictate their future and they too can rewrite their story. So that was the beginning, the uh, epitome of Dreams Bigger Than Texas. So I started preparing to, to share this memoir and everything that I do um, is from the overflow of what God has done in my life. Um, because again, if it was up to the enemy or a status or culture, I wouldn't be in the position that I am in today. So faith is a critical component um, for everything I do. I'm here for a reason, right? I'm, I'm here to see another day. And what better way to share my story than to share my story and inspire other individuals? That's so awesome. I'm so excited about your book I'm excited about what you just shared and I'm even more excited about this whole idea about the overflow of what God has done mm -hmm. mm, that's some that's some good word right there so when you talk about all that God has done for you um you've accomplished a lot uh what can you tell us about this idea about the overflow of what he's done like you have published three books and your latest book has just been published and you are a newlywed and mm -hmm. you run a business. So tell us about how that all works together for you in your life. So that overflow, I think is really important 
to one, take time to really practice gratitude. When you mm -hmm. take a moment to think about what you have, uh, it may not be what you want to drive, what you want to eat, but you have options. You have a means to get you someplace. So um, shifting your lens through a, a space of gratitude and being thankful, that highlights the overflow because you have something. And from that something that you have, there's always space to give. And I think when we give, we are essentially kind of sowing seeds in the lives of other people. So the overflow for me is just being grateful for what God has done. Um, again, I shared a bit about my background and that's what I really dive into in the book. Really this um, idea of growing into womanhood and breaking, breaking down barriers and, and uh, labels and titles that culture can put on you. So I know that there is purpose because I'm still here. And because there is purpose on my life, you know, for me, it was about really kind of seeking God and tapping in to get what that purpose was, hence be the inspire you being born and help figure out how I could pour into others. Um, so it just works all together seamlessly. I got married at 36. Uh, so being married at 36, you know, statistically, we, I, just actually, ironically enough, did an interview um, talking about Kevin Samuels and sometimes society put these labels that at 35 or 30 plus black women are not getting married. So there yeah, is still <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> yes. So there is still hope. And I think if you have a little bit of faith and a lot of hard work, uh, you can create and make something happen. Of course, as you're partnering with God and taking a moment to be grateful for it. Um, and from what, what you have left, that is your overflow. That is the abundance. And you, you give from there. So everything has been working together for me. Because again, Jasmine, I shouldn't even be here. Mm, that's good. That's good. You know, God rest his soul. Kevin Samuels has been a hot topic since the pandemic. You know, <laughs> his controversial <laughs> conversations and YouTube, uh, you know, have he, he built his brand <laughs> to millions of followers and you know some things he said you know very very harsh he came across very very harsh to women and I'm one of those ones who got married after 35 mm, like you yeah. and so I can attest to God working out working it out for me giving me that desire for my heart right to yeah. you know get married and you know eventually start a family but I'm grateful that I wasn't left to be a statistic or, you know, I wasn't, you know, left alone to die alone, die alone, <laughs> die alone with my dog. Right. 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 <laughs> In the words of um, Mr. Samuels, but it's let us be a testament to the ladies out Absolutely. there that it can happen for you. You can, can find the man that God has for you, your purpose partner, the one who God kept for you after 35. How about that? How about that? I, I love that, Jasmine. And just to add, fortunately, too, you wasn't a woman that subscribed to this notion that it, it could not happen for you. How about and I that? I think more than anything, when you think about go, um, girl, go global, you know, it's a call to action for women and it's mm -hmm. empowering women and matching their faith. So we both had to have some level of faith to believe that God can still work in our relationships, in our businesses, and in our books. Um, in order to make that thing come to pass that is the work that we put in with the faith so so yes I love it a hundred percent and one of the things that I have observed you know from what I've seen from you is that you have a very supportive husband who is he has his goals but he also supports you in your goals and likewise the same is true for my husband and I can attest to some of those you know I guess I might say social constructs around yeah. ambitious women um, that um, high value men, for example, might not want an ambitious woman, but here we are, mm. you know, who have men who might be deemed by society as high value and they have ambitious women. And yeah. I feel very, very supported by my husband. And I know you do too. I do. I do. And uh, just to break down, to dive into, I know we kind of did a little pivot, but since we're here, I think it's a beautiful topic to shed light on from women you know, like ourselves has been in those trenches. When you think about high value, that definition alone, according to Samuels or even culture Instagram, it is tied into financial status and mm -hmm. image base, right? But women like ourselves understand as high value women that character has to go hand in hand with it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. right? So if a man finds a wife, one, the Bible says he finds a good thing and there's a promise assigned to that. It's blessing that comes after finding her. So if this is a high value man, he understands that character is important, right? So if you meet, if you're a high value man, then likely you're looking for a high value woman, a woman of noble character, a woman that could pour into you and add value to what it is that you're doing. So if she's adding value, it's no room for intimidation. It's mm -hmm. no need for intimidation. Right. It's no need for intimidation because you understand that she's on your team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. No room, no room for intimidation. And it's just it has to be a misnomer. You know, it has to be a misnomer. This idea that ambitious women don't want to be loved and don't want to what we call submit or don't want to let their men lead them. You know, it has to be a misnomer because I know too many ambitious women in my circle who are would love a, a man <laughs> to let lead them and you know, according to you know, follow them as they follow Christ. Hello. Right. <laughs> but who would love a woman to be led by a strong alpha male, you know, might I add. Hello? <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Okay. <laughs> And uh, just being let, we're tired. We're tired. I think ambitious women and women as a whole, we do what we need to do because we have had to. I don't. I, I don't think that it's just. A, I raise my hand. I, I flex my ambition. Or flex my independence. I am um, willing and ready to share this space with someone that is capable and competent. Uh, that can lead, and I mm -hmm. desire to submit to because I understand. Like you mentioned, he's submitted to Christ and he has a plan. I like to say, right. why ride around wasting premium gas with no destination, with no plan, with no vision? We're, we're not doing it. It's 2022. Gas mm. is too high. It's too high. <laughs> we're not riding around aimless. We're, we're setting the mark and going for it. Mm -hmm. That's good. So if we were to talk, if I were to ask you, you know, what it means to be the inspired me? When you talk about your business, your brand is be the inspired you. How can I be my inspired self? What do you have any tips or strategies to help me get there? Yes. So the inspired you is essentially that inner savage. I like mm -hmm. to call the inspire you. That is your higher self. That is you being accountable, taking action, being considered consistent um, and committed. There are times where we know we have a job or a task and we just do it just to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So you're just operating off, you're just doing it. And then there's times where you go hard, you're showing up, you're present, you're vulnerable, you're intentional, you're excellent, you're doing things to a high level. And that is the inspired version of you. That's the inner savage, Jasmine. And as a believer, that's really you operating in the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. when you're operating in the Holy Spirit, you're operating in a sort of power that does not accept uh, safe. We don't settle for safe. You're going above and beyond and you're not created to be average. You're created to be extraordinary because we're created by a creator who is extraordinary. So that inspired version of you is the inner savage. And my goal is to inspire people, if you will, and to help them tap into that every day. Showing up every day is that boss, that intentional you. That is the inner savage, uh, which is the inspired version of you. That's good that intentional you. I've met so many people, you know, at different ages and stages in life who, you know, don't know their purpose, don't know what their, their intentional self or that intentional you that you just referenced. They don't know who the, they don't know themselves. And it's women, men at all, all ages and stages who really, so don't know themselves. So the work that you're doing is definitely much, much needed, much, much needed, you know, if you could just tell me a little bit more about advice you would give women who desire to step into that intentional self. You know, if you had your top three strategies to help women, these help girls go global, help women reach their calling or reach that intentional self that you referenced. Do you have any strategies, at least three? Top yeah. Three? Absolutely. Um, so that inspired version of you, the the inner savage that's you showing up, first of all, identity. Um, I recently did a purpose series that was talking about, you know, strategies and ways to find your purpose. I think being very clear about 
who you are um, and whose you are and who God called you to be once you have a solid foundation in your identity that aligns um, with purpose because you know your, my identity. I was created uniquely. I was created love. So I don't have to seek out love. I don't have to seek out validation. I was created for a purpose, right? So knowing your identity, that's the first step, I believe, to tapping into that inspired version of you. And then once you're really clear about, you know, who you are really in Christ, the next thing is a purpose. And a lot of times purpose without having a purpose, that purpose void, we are just throwing the spaghetti at the wall, reaching, grasping for straws at everything that comes our way and we easily move. So that next thing, getting clear about your purpose and the best way to get your purpose of course is to seek the person that created you the one that created you um, but a practical strategy to help identify purpose what are you naturally good at what keeps you up at night what are you passionate about mm -hmm. those things that people say hey girl you're really good at that what do you do effortlessly so finding out your identity certainly seeking your purpose and getting clear about it and then for me that last thing is leaving a legacy thinking about what you're leaving in the world because if we're so fixated on the right now um, then we're doing things that are just temporal. It's just in the meantime, and we're not strategic. So it's not bringing about that intentionality because it's instant gratification. So if we are thinking about legacy, everything that I'm doing, how am I impacting other people? What portion am I leaving on this planet? What will they say about me when I'm gone? So identity, okay. operating in purpose, and thinking about your legacy. Those would be a couple strategies um, just kind of quick nuggets to help people think about being that inspired version of themselves. That's good. So what would you tell your 20 something year old <laughs> self about love, relationships, identity? Is there anything on the, along those lines that you would tell your 20 year old self <laughs> that you know now? Oh, child. Yes, <laughs> ma'am. Listen, my 20 year old self is unfortunate. Um, and as a adult, I've done a lot of soul searching, unpacking bags. And I talk about a lot of these things in Dreams for Green Texas, different themes, because it's a coming of age story, a woman growing into to mm -hmm. womanhood. And so a lot of the things that I've encountered was trying to feel the deficit, you know, searching for purpose in all the wrong places, searching for worth. Um, I did not have a relationship with God. I was not clear fully about what my purpose was. And so I sought out attention in different ways, searching for love, um, the love of my absent father that wasn't there. I wrestled with uh, demons from my past. You know, I was hurt mm -hmm. in many ways and acting out. Um, so something that I would tell myself in, in that space, one, I would let her know that she is safe, right? She is healed. She's okay she's okay. Um, she's okay. And that she's loved. So I would affirm myself and really help myself identify that identity um, mm -hmm. for just to set the tone of everything else. If I knew who I was, like for real knew who I was and knew my purpose and a lot of decisions would have been differently. I, I would have made decisions, different decisions, essentially. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would tell her that, hey, you are loved, you're valuable you know, your identity is in Christ. And as long as you are pleasing to him, it does not matter, you know, what everyone else think. And there's no way to make people love you there. You, you can't do anything mm. to try to garner the attention That's and, good. and the support. You can't make people love you. So those would be a couple of things that I would share with my younger self. That's so good. You, you mentioned so many great nuggets. You know, I was just having a conversation with a close close family member and she's going through a breakup mm -hmm. and you know it's hard it's hard when you have a desire for a relationship it's even hard outside of that when you just suffer life's disappointments yeah uh not 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 only about in relationships but it could be in career choices family choices relationship I mean it's just so many ways to be disappointed in life yeah and when we face those disappointments some of the things that you mentioned are just so so key you know I talk a lot about time and sometimes when we're younger we want to speed through life mm. not living in the ebbs and flows of life and learning from our mistakes or learning that everything takes time we're not going to get from point a to point b to c 
overnight. And sometimes because we live in this cycle of time that's too fast when we're young and too slow when we're older, (laughs) we don't always, you know, live in the moment. Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's so good. What you just shared. Hey, what you just shared fast when we're young and slow when we're older. Here's a funny thing. Um, you don't even realize it's fast when you're young because I remember being 18 or like, oh, I wish I was grown or it feels slow, but I love what you share because it is fast. You blink, the kids are off to college, you know, you blink, Mm -hmm. you know, but you can only be older. That's the hindsight for you to be able to see that. So I I love that. I I never really considered it's fast when you're young, but of course, when you're in that space, you never see it as such. It's not until the hindsight kicks in. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. I want to talk a little bit about your relationship um, with your husband and how you all met, because I think that it's a pretty interesting story. And hopefully someone out there, some lady will be inspired to live out loud and maybe um, take some of the tips that you offer around love and relationships, because you do uh, talk a lot about your relationship and how you met your husband. And I'd like you to share just a little bit about that. Yes, he is my, my husband is my favorite, one of my favorite (laughs) subjects to talk about. Uh, So in short, ladies, I was engaged to someone else, broke off the engagement, um, embarrassingly crushed. It was tough, but I needed to. And I think that's something that a lot of women don't really, just choosing you. So that's an an identity piece, knowing what you deserve and what you're worth. So broke off a previous relationship, a pandemic hits, I'm approaching 36. I'm like, oh my God, I'm definitely not going to meet anyone uh you know we're in the middle of a pandemic you know I broke off one I'm in Atlanta Georgia I need to say it again I'm in Atlanta Georgia Uh, (laughs) so when you think about the dating scene here it is it's it's hey it's vicious out here um pandemic hits you know um I'm trusting God you know deep in my heart I'm trusting him but externally you know there are times where I'm like oh my gosh I'm older you know and if I drank the Kevin Samuels Kool-Aid again I wouldn't have I would have been where I am today because I wouldn't have believed. Uh, Met my husband in the middle of a pandemic. We connected on Facebook dating, ladies. Mm. Facebook dating. So do not tell them. Tell the people. Tell the people. Yes. (laughs) It's 2022. He can operate and work through any medium that he chooses. Yes. And it's important to be visible. He's not likely not going to come knocking on your door. So you got to put yourself out there, especially if that is something that you want. So when we talk about intentionality, you got to be intentional, even in your relationship life, you know, just like you are with your job, you know, you may move a city for this job, you apply, you check out the qualifications that in any area, whether it's a weight loss journey, trying to have children, you've got to be intentional. So uh, put myself out there, meet him in a pandemic. Um, We had like two dates and, you know, he knew right away. uh, I'm praying like, Lord, give me a sign, give me a sign uh, that. (laughs) eventually heard the Holy Spirit, you know, say this is him followed by a series of other events. And at 36, you know, we're dating for purpose. We're dating for marriage. It doesn't take a whole day to recognize sunshine and the (laughs) words are common. And uh, my husband knew I was the one, you know, and so because we're both intentional, we're dating for marriage. We aligned. The Lord said, yes, we pull trigger. And this, that time we, uh, we eloped. We eloped. We wanted something private and quaint for me, him, and God. We ended up having a ceremony after, but we married 11 weeks in 11 weeks of knowing each other in a pandemic right after I had to call off an engagement. So God can turn anything around. Um, I did create a list after that first breakup, listing out the things that I wanted. I prayed and and did some inner work, uh, you know, some self-reflection. Um, and I was prepared. I was prepared to be a wife and trust in, you know, uh, the Lord and still moving forward, i.e. getting on the app. Mm. You know? and, and really, Jasmine, the rest is is history. Um, and it's just been a, a joyous ride. You know, he has added significant value, uh, which confirmed, you know, what the Lord had for me and my identity. So that's good. So, yeah. Man, you said so much, but I, I know two, two things I want to <laughs> well, maybe two or three things I want to point out. First thing is strategy. Mm. You cannot meet people in the house necessarily <laughs> unless you go online, but it takes going outside of yourself mm-hmm. 
in order to do something you might not have done before in order to get the things that you want. You know, you have to be intentional, mm. consistent. You know, I, I love that. And one thing that I definitely got to bring out, he knew right away. Mm. Oh my, mm. because three years, four years, five mm. years, and they still don't know what they want to do with you. Man, I told my husband, now we were dating with the intent to marry, but I told my husband at two years or a year and six months, and what we doing? <laughs> what we doing? Okay. Okay. What we doing because I'm at this point, I'm 36. Mm. I didn't get married till I was 37. We met when I was 35. So two years, about two okay. years then. But at one point I'm I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. We don't have, we I, and he, he got the message because do I need to start dating again? Because if this not going the direction that I needed to go, mm-hmm. I, I need to make a decision. And so I view this whole concept about dating, love and relationships, almost like a business deal to some degree. You mm-hmm. got to be willing to walk away mm-hmm. if the deal is not progressing. You got to know right. when to walk away. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, and, and it's a purpose part. And when you think about that, uh, the what marriage is supposed to be, it's a covenant. You know, mm-hmm. Adam got the wife, you know, to be a helpmate because God gave him a purpose to till the land and to do a job. And so he created a helper. So from a business perspective, kind of like how you mentioned, um, they've got to be aligned with purpose and in some way that that's complementary to, you know, what you're doing, or maybe you're the starring uh, you're maybe you're not the main character. Maybe you're the supporting character, and God wants to use you to help birth something in them. But it still has to be purposeful. And if it if it's not, I agree, Jasmine. You got to walk away. Why waste your time? Oh, you did it right. I mean, yeah, yeah. Part of the hey. whole engagement. I don't yeah. know. You know, you didn't share why, and we don't necessarily need to know. But you know, you were willing to walk away and say, God, I surrender. Yep. This all to you. I, I surrender my marriage, marriage, future marriage to you, this relationship. And I'm going to, I'm going to go at it and see what you have for me. Yep. No matter how uncomfortable and embarrassing it mm. is, you know, and that's why, uh, the, the divorce rate is, is high because people hop into these things without properly vetting and being clear about who they are, what they want, their identity, you know, and really who God has for them. And they're in something. It's like, oh, we feel out of love or, oh, da, 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 da. And it's like, yo, you wasn't intentional from the start. And I think that is just set up for failure. Failure. Yeah. Mm, that's so good. You said so much. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we have inspired someone yeah. to, you know, make a decision. How about that? There we go. That's it. That is it, Jazz. Make a decision. Make a Be decision. intentional. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just want to know what is one or two words you would use to encourage women to be the inspired them to dream bigger than taxes. <laughs> Give me, you know, a couple words that you would use to help encourage um, the women out there, those global girls who say, I don't necessarily know how to be the inspired me, but Raquel shared this with me. So I'm going to take it and run with it. Yeah. So for ladies out there, really getting clear about your identity and, and who you are um, in Christ, you know, I have to bring it back to the faith component. And for mm-hmm. those of, that may not be followers of the faith, um, identity. Once you start the trail of identity and knowing who you are, it's going to lead you back to your creator anyway. But um, yeah, <laughs> how about those apples? But yeah, knowing your identity. And when you know who you are, you are unique. You're love. You're created for a purpose. You're precious. You're important. You're forgiving. You're protected. You're empowered. You are all those things. So because you are then you don't deserve less than, right? Because you are those things, you naturally are, and you deserve everything that aligns with who God said you are. So that's that first thing. That's how you uh, really dream bigger, knowing who you are. And then the next thing is really getting clear about your purpose, ladies, and thinking about your legacy. What do you want to leave in this world um, when you're no longer here? What impact are you making? So those would certainly be the the main forefront and, and, and I have to add this, I would be remiss if I didn't, because dreams bigger than Texas, I talked about how my life started. Your past doesn't have to dictate your future. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, you could start one way, i.e. engaged to someone else, end up a completely different way, you know, married, um, an author, you know, overcoming things. So your past doesn't have to dictate your future. Get That's clear so about your identity and your purpose. Man, Raquel, I think you just taught us how to go global. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, that's what we're here for, Jasmine. Yes, yes. So what can we expect from you next? Like you have your book, your third book, by the way. You are coaching. You are doing all kind of big things in Atlanta. What can we expect from you next? You can expect more creativity. Like my cre creative is my creativity is my sweet spot. Um, so I'm actually working on a script for Dreams Bigger Than Texas, a movie script. Um, and my next book, listen, Jazz, this one is going to be a banger. Mm. This book is actually talking about identity and culture. Culture tells us who we are, what we should look like. You know, it, it determines what's high value. And so this, this next project that I'll be working on soon is talking about identity crisis in many ways and just redirecting back to who you are created to be. So that's what your, your lovely ladies can expect, more creativity, more gems being dropped and more ways to serve and inspire, and serve and inspire and work on my legacy. Mm, that's good. That's good. Before we get off, what I want to do, I'm feeling led here. Raquel, would you mind just offering a prayer up for the ladies who, you know, just need a rejuvenation within themselves, within their relationship with Christ, because my goal here with the Girl Go Global community and podcast is really just to point people back to Christ. Mm. And as such, you know, um, th that's what I want to do right yeah. now at the end of this podcast here, this episode, who I have with me, Miss Raquel Shelton Robertson, and she is the owner of the be the Inspired ULLC brand. And she's going to offer up a prayer for the ladies who are looking to be more intentional, seek, step into their purpose and live out loud the courageous life for which God created them. Raquel, would you do us the honors? Absolutely. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time together on the podcast. Lord, I pray that every woman that needs to hear this conversation will hear it, Lord. And not only will they hear it, but that the Holy Spirit would do some inner work in their hearts. Lord, let these women know that they are valuable, their love, their past does not dictate their future, and that their identity is in you, and you called them and formed them before they were in their mother's womb. God, I pray protection over these women. I declare just love and favor to surround them. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And so before we hop off this episode, Raquel, please tell the people how they can connect with you. You can follow me on um, pretty much all platforms. The easiest way is to go to my website. That is Raquel Robertson, R-O-B-E-R-S-O-N, the first name R-A-H-K-A-L.com. And all of my social media handles are there. I have an Instagram for my journey with my husband to inspire you in the love area. I have a blog um, to inspire you in the faith area. And then my Be The Inspired You um, for the personal development. So go over to RaquelRobertson.com and connect with me. I would love to see you lovely ladies there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Raquel, for joining me. This has been a great conversation with the Girl Go Global podcast, where faith and works are empowered. I'm so glad to have had Raquel on this episode. So ladies, please like, share, and send us a review. Let us know how you're enjoying the content, and we'll be sure to consistently drop new episodes every week. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me, Jasmine. Thanks.